everybody. This is Coach Brett, and I'm at Brazos Natural Foods, and I'm here with Jen Atkins, one of the co-owners. How's it going? Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> You're a superstar now on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, Jen has offered to take us through the store and show us a few things that are really healthy for us triathletes and, and uh, discuss with us a few things we should know. So uh, we're actually right here at some of the green superfood kind of things. Is there a... Uh, but there's a lot. So a lot. <laughs> what, what, what do we need to know about these and, and what are we looking for? Well, it depends on individual need partly. It depends on if you're looking for something for uh, immediate energy levels, if you're looking for something to help sustain blood sugar, if you're looking for something that's more of a, a total food, uh, a nutrient-dense food, uh, mm -hmm. something as a meal replacement, or again, if you're looking for something with a specific uh, purpose. So there are several products to choose from. And so what's uh, chlorella and spirulina? The chlorella, chlorella and the spirulina, those are microalgaes, and uh -huh. those are very nutrient dense. They have a great spectrum of minerals, vitamins. They will have a lot of the carotenoid pigments that are really uh, super antioxidants for the system. Mm -hmm. Spirulina is more appropriate if you're looking for something to help sustain blood sugar levels. Okay. And the chlorella might be more appropriate if you're looking for something to help the blood carry oxygen. It also is very detoxifying for the system. Uh -huh. And then something like the just barley, which is a powder that you mix up um, like a wheatgrass shot, basically, and you do that on an empty stomach, ideally. That one tends to, because of its high enzyme content, it tends mm -hmm. to be more appropriate for a more immediate uh, energizing effect. Okay. So... I've been taught that it's uh, kind of like replacing greens in a way. Not replacing greens, but like supplementing greens. Supplementing greens. I mean, nothing's going to substitute for a kale diet. Yeah. I, I saw a t-shirt that said kale is the new beef. I love kale. It's, <laughs> I grow it in my garden, and it's really easy to do that. Yeah. For those who, you've got an apartment, you're not going to be growing anything. This is a really good way to uh, get the chlorophyll sources and the, the carotenoid spectrum, uh, all those nutrients in your diet. And okay. you can do it in powder and tablet. We try and make it really convenient for people. So yeah. there are also blends uh, like these up here. These are going to be blends of sprouted seeds and grains and legumes and there are some that are in the raw form. And those are, again, good if you want a whole spectrum of foods, if you're looking for something that's more like a complete nutrient source. If you have food sensitivities, then you might want to go with one of the individual nutrients, mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise you have the, the combinations available. Right. And so one thing I've learned is that you might want to... Um, to get this into your diet, because some of it doesn't taste like candy or anything like that, no. <laughs> uh, you can make a fruit smoothie and then pour some in. And it doesn't take a whole lot of, for instance, the spirulina or the chlorella, perhaps a teaspoon uh -huh. uh, would be a serving size for those. Uh, or some of the, the bee pollen blends, do have the bee pollen as well as some of the microalgaes and the, yeah. the cereal grasses. And oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I started to interrupt. So, yeah, I get excited. <laughs> So those are good to add to, again, smoothies or protein shake, you know, however, right. however you prefer to do it. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, earlier we were talking and you started to mention um, coconut oil and oh. juice and things like that. So can we go over there? We'll go over there. All right. Where are we looking? Okay. We've got the coconut milks, and I happen to like this particular brand, the Native Forest, because they're one of the only two companies, I think, that do not line their cans with BPA. So no, this oh. A okay. in the Native Forest. Um, Eden is the other brand that does not do that, but this is the one that has the coconut milk, and I like to get the full fat. Get, yeah. That's one of the fats you want. It's a saturated fat that has a high quantity of lauric, putric, and nucleic acids. Those are some of the fats you want. They are stable. They do not, they're not prone to oxidation. Mm -hmm. So those are really good for your system, and your system, uh, your body uses those very readily for energy. And okay. they're also very easily uh, assimilated. They're a fat that does not require a lot of bile for assimilation. Okay. So people who have digestive issues, the coconut products are really, really good for the system. So readily, a red of, red of, <laughs> readily <laughs> available uh, uh, stores of energy. And uh, you were also saying people that are vegan or vegetarian might yeah. need to be looking for fats um, because they're not getting as much fat, and coconut milk is a great source for that. That's a really good source for them, and you know, some people find it hard to just find uh, their 
to use nuts as their sole protein or mm-hmm. fat source. You know, it's, you can only do so many nuts. Only. Yeah, it gets old after a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the coconut milk so, yeah. is a really good So there's thing. coconut milk. I put coconut milk on my cereal every morning. There are those, and they also make one uh, that's refrigerated now that's more like a regular milk. Yeah, so that that's what great. I use. And then I use, um, if I make a banana smoothie, I put coconut milk in there. For people who are looking for egg substitutes too, who are vegan, these, uh, the coconut milk substitutes really well for eggs and baking. So if you're really? Vegan, yes, I've eggs? Done this. Yes, they wow. substitute for eggs. This, this size will substitute for two eggs. Oh, so all right, baking, cool. Egg substitute, that makes it great. I knew we'd learn something totally outrageous here. <laughs> wow, that's neat. Okay. And they're also the coconut waters if you're looking for an electrolyte source. Uh, right. Something for uh, during workout, post workout, you know, whenever you need uh, something for hydration to restore your electrolyte right. levels. The coconut water is really good for potassium, also magnesium. Uh-huh. These are it's all right. usually easy to find at most markets now. Uh-huh. And you can get some that are just the, the plain, unflavored. Let's There's see if you have the awesome milk. one. Uh, oh, there, there, it is. there it is, <laughs> Amy and Brian. So here's one of our sponsors of Zentri. And I drank three of these um i ran 100 miles this weekend <laughs> yeah there you go yeah i ran an ultra and ultra marathon and you would get a cramp or two during that i drank three of these and um no cramps wow. Isn't that crazy it, it's uh, called running but it's a lot of walking but anyway so um it was in the woods in uh, uh huntsville state park it's cool. You got to do it. Yeah. Do you run? I run some. I haven't done the training for a while, but I have. Yeah. A, they have a fifty and a hundred, and uh, it's great. They have it every year. We'll be in touch. I'll get you trained for it. <laughs> okay. So let's see. We've got okay the coconut juice, coconut water. There are also the acai's for people who like those for energizing, or also for helping with blood sugar levels. So uh-huh. the acai project products okay. now. So we've got also the different coconut oil products and. Um, they are going to be solid like this at room temperature, like say 75 degrees or cooler, but they liquefy warmer than that temperature. Right. So you can use it as a butter substitute if you need a vegan butter source a substitute. Um, but again, these are really, really good for cooking oils, for, for using um, on toast. You like to have something that's spread on toast. They're mm-hmm. a really good uh, fat source and they're stable and there is a difference also between the virgin coconut oils and the regular refined. Yeah. If you're getting a refined coconut oil, I would suggest an organic because then you don't have the hexane and other solvent residues used for extraction. So okay. get an organic definitely with, with the refined. Okay. Um, and then the virgin coconut oils, those are going to have the coconut flavor yeah. uh, and aroma to them. So it just depends on what your cooking needs are. Yeah. Whether you want the coconut flavor or not. Yeah. Cool. That's been my primary cooking oil for least 15 years. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that you don't want to do olive oil over too high of a temperature. Did you know that? Yeah, the, the olive oil, medium heat cooking, I prefer to use it as a, a dressing oil. Um, yeah, exactly. Oil. And then also, there of the high heat cooking oils, the organic peanut oil you can actually get now, we have that. Uh, so that one is grown without the, the pesticides and so forth. And that one is a high heat cooking oil, okay. a liquid cooking oil. There's also the sesame oils, which are good for low heat or dressing oils. And there's a difference between the toasted and the right. regular. Yeah, right. the toasted's going to be a much colder yeah. flavor. And then there's also the flax oils. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for your omega-3 fatty acid sources, we've got the flax. There are also some fish oils. There's blends. There are some that are uh, flavored blends here. There's some that are blended fish and flax, some that are flax by themselves. Some, uh, like this lavender one here, is a blend with the flax oil, the barrage oil, and uh, DHA from an algal source. So you get the DHA mm-hmm. uh, from a vegan source. And that one's a berry flavor. It's really good. Sweet with the xylitol, so it's appropriate for uh, blood sugar issues. Right. Okay. So those are really good. And then there's the plain flax oils, so you get your omega-3 fatty acids. Right. And those are really good for smoothies or to mix into yogurt. Those yeah. Really good. Yeah. So, uh, lastly, we were going to talk about how people complain that uh, eating uh, organic or healthy costs too much money, and you had a tip for that. Well, one is to buy products in bulk, and the other is to get produce, and part of the caveat with that for some people is it involves cooking, and a lot of people now, they don't know how to cook, they didn't grow up with cooking, they think cooking takes too long, and really, if you cook it all, 
it does not take that long. You know the skills to be efficient and to uh, be frugal with, with food. A lot of times what you're paying for extra is for the prepared food. It's you've paid for the privilege of someone else preparing it for you. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of where some of the extra costs can right. come back. But if you get in bulk, uh, you get your needs, you know, what you need at a time, you prepare it, and you get produce, you know, you get sweet potatoes, you get greens, you get fruit, vegetables, whatever you need, mm -hmm. and you prepare it. So one of my, one of the things I think is most important is actually learning how to cook. Right. And, and then if you cook, you, you cook, um, you can cook several meals all at once, right? And uh, you could cook uh, three, four, five portions and then put it in the fridge. You can do that, or you can cook, again, as needed. And in my household, I'm used to cooking for three people. I'm used to cooking for one. I've cooked for the entire staff here at the store before. Mm -hmm. So I've cooked for a variety of health needs, for a variety of portion size. And it's once you're used to cooking, I mean, you can really adapt the skills and what you're cooking to, to me. And some things just are really simple, like... I will regularly just put sweet potatoes cut into whatever size is appropriate for the cooking time, the, the meal, and I'll just steam them. You just put them in a pot, a little water, and that doesn't take long to prepare. And a splash of sesame, uh, excuse me, a splash of soy sauce and some some garlic or whatever you want to put on them, and that's a meal. Yeah. So, Isn't it great? <laughs> so it's really, really simple. Yeah. Okay. And, well, thank you very much. This has been so cool. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. I look forward to doing it again. All right. Bye.